Hello Year 7. We're going to spend this week revising the first three topics that we've done this year. Everyone else in Year 7 started with energy. We started with particles, but we're going to revise energy first along with everyone else. Um, I've given you out a piece of paper and what I would like you to do now is pause this video and fold your piece of paper so it makes six boxes on each side. Then you can number the boxes 1 to 12 and I'm going to set you 12 mini challenges as this video progresses. Put your hand up if you need help folding your piece of paper into six boxes. We often use the word energy. I have lots of energy today or I haven't got enough energy to climb the hill. Humans and other animals need energy to live. We need energy to help us grow and repair our bodies and to move and keep warm. Our bodies use food as a source of energy. The unit for measuring energy is the joule. The amount of energy needed to lift an apple from the table to your mouth is about one joule. Most food contains a lot more energy than this, so we usually measure the energy in food using kilojoules. One kilojoule is equal to 1,000 joules. We can calculate the amount of energy in food by looking at the nutritional information on food labels. Here is a food label for a mystery food. Each serving is 150 grams. In box number one, write down how much energy is in one serving of this food. Pause the video until you have your answer written down. Different people need different amounts of energy. Your body needs energy to help it grow. You also need energy to move around. If you do a lot of exercise, you need more energy than if you spend most of your time watching television. A good diet should provide only the amount of energy the person's body needs. If the diet contains more energy than the person needs, the body will store energy in fat and the person will gain weight. If the diet does not contain enough energy, the person will lose weight and become thinner. Using the graph, what is the difference in the amount of energy needed by a five-year-old compared to an 18-year-old? Write your answer in box number two. You can compare the amount of energy stored in different foods by burning them. The diagram shows the apparatus that we used in this investigation. The energy released by the burning food heats the water in the boiling tube. The higher the temperature of the water, the more energy the food released when it was burnt. In this investigation, you should find the mass of the piece of food, then carefully put the food onto the pin of the mounted needle. You should use the same volume of water and record the start and end temperature. Ideally, the starting temperature of the water will be the same. Light the food using a Bunsen burner and hold the burning food under the boiling tube. Make sure the flame is touching the boiling tube. When the food has finished burning, record the temperature of the water again. Let the food cool down, then push what is left of the food off the pin and find its mass. If there is no food left, you would write a zero gram for its mass. The table shows a set of results. So your challenge for this slide in box number three is to write down which food transferred the most energy per gram. Energy can be stored. For example, energy is stored in the chemical substances in food, petrol, cells or batteries. Energy can be stored in other ways. A hot object can be a store of thermal energy. Energy is stored whenever something springy is squashed, stretched, bent or twisted. We call this elastic potential energy. A stretched elastic band is storing energy in this way. Anything in a high position stores energy. We call this gravitational potential energy. It took energy to move the object up to its high position and this energy can transfer again when the object falls. Energy is stored inside all materials. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be transferred and stored in different ways. In box number four, write down which type of energy is stored in a moving object. Things happen when energy moves from one store to another. This can happen mechanically when a force causes something to happen, by electrical transfer, for example, when energy in a fuel is transferred by electricity to power a fairground ride or other machine. Energy can be transferred by heating. When you use a pan or a kettle to heat some water, the chemical substances inside fireworks store energy. When the firework goes off, energy is transferred by heating and by light and sound. In box number five, write down two examples of things that transfer energy by sound. 
Energy is needed to get things done, and to get a job done, energy must be moved or transferred from one place to another. Not all energy is transferred usefully. Sometimes energy is wasted or not useful. If we remember that energy cannot be created or destroyed, there will always be the same amount of energy before and after the transfer. So in this question for box number six, if 100 joules of energy are put into a light bulb and 75 joules of energy are usefully transferred as light energy, how much energy is wasted as heat energy? A fuel is a substance that contains a store of chemical or nuclear energy that can easily be transferred. Most fuels are burned to release the energy they store and the energy is transferred to the surroundings by heating. Burning a fuel does not make energy, it only transfers it. Nuclear fuels release energy in different ways. Energy from fuels in power station is transferred to homes, schools, factories and offices using electricity. We say that electricity is generated in power stations. In box number seven, write down the name of three fuels. Fossil fuels are made from the remains of organisms that died millions of years ago. Coal was formed many millions of years ago from plants. When the plant dies, they became buried in mud, which stopped them rotting away. Most layers of the mud squashed the plant remains. This squashing, together with the heat from the inside of the earth, turned the mud into rock and the plant remains into coal. Oil and natural gas formed from tiny animals and plants that lived in the sea millions of years ago. These fell to the seabed when they died and got buried in mud and sand. More layers of mud and sand fell on top of them and squashed them, turning them into crude oil and natural gas. Fuels such as petrol and diesel are made from oil. Coal, oil and natural gas are non-renewable fuels because they cannot be replaced at the rate that humans use them up. It takes many millions of years for them to form and so our supplies will eventually run out. For this challenge in box number 8, write down the name of the fossil fuels that will run out first. Biofuels are made from plants or the waste from animals. They are renewable fuels because more plants can be grown to make more fuel. Some biofuels are used in cars and other vehicles like McDonald's lorries. And some are used for heating, cooking or generating electricity. Other renewable energy resources can be used for heating, but most are used to generate electricity. Solar power uses energy transferred from the sun. Solar panels consist of tubes full of water which heat up. These can be mounted on roofs and the hot water used to heat the building or to provide hot water for washing. Solar cells use energy transferred by light to produce electricity directly. Wind turbines use wind to turn large blades and the blades turn a generator. Moving water can also be used to generate electricity at a hydroelectric power station. Waves and tides can also be used to generate electricity. In some places, rocks underground are hot. Water can be heated by pumping it through the rocks this is called geothermal power. Most renewable fuels are not available all of the time because they depend on the weather. Only hydroelectricity and geothermal power are available at any time. However, these resources can only be used in locations with a suitable place for the reservoir or hot rocks underground. In box number nine, write down three examples of renewable energy resources. A lot of energy that we use in the UK comes from burning fossil fuels. Most scientists who study the climate think that fossil fuels are helping to make the earth warmer because of a gas called carbon dioxide being produced when they burn. We can reduce the amount of carbon dioxide we add to the atmosphere by using less fossil fuels. This will also make our supplies of fossil fuels last longer. We can all make changes to help save energy, like wearing a jumper instead of switching the heating on buying energy efficient appliances, walking or cycling instead of taking the car and switching off the lights when you leave a room. In your last box, box number 10, write a pledge, something that you will try and do from now on to reduce the amount of energy that you use. What you should do now. Uh, mark your answers in your blue pen. Most of them are here in this table. If you get six or more out of 10, then you need to bring your sheet to me to collect a house point for your knowledge for success. 
I will be checking question five and question 10 when you bring me your sheet. Congratulations.